No matter how chaotic life may get, there's always a need to look out for your best friend. Will technology drive the next phase of the humanization of pets? Or is this investing trend for the dogs? You know, I'm always talking about how the humanization of pets is one of the great secular growth themes of our era. Just yesterday, we learned about the big acquisition of VCA, better known as Veterinary Centers of America, or WOOF, by Mars, the huge privately held candy company. But as we treat our cats and dogs more like people, this story becomes bigger than just pet food and pet health care. That's why tonight we're going off the tape with Rover. This is a privately held startup. Well, it's been around for a little bit here. That's become the nation's largest network of pet sitters and dog walkers. Kind of like the Uber or Postmates for your pet. Just scroll through their app to find a nearby sitter or walker, book the service you want, and drop off your animal. Even though Rover has a network of over 65,000 sitters, they've got a very selective vetting process, which is part of why they've been so successful. The other big factor, in the old days, nobody had a problem keeping their dog in a kennel or tie them up in the backyard. These days, people often treat pets better than they treat their children, which means they're willing to shell out for real supervision. I think this is a very intriguing story where the humanization of pets meets the on-demand economy. So let's take a closer look with Aaron Easterlies, the CEO of Rover.com, member private company, find out more about his company and how it's changing the pet care landscape. Mr. Easterly, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Have a seat. Well, thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Okay. Uh, in the time since I mentioned that I'm going to have you on, two groups of people hit me. One is the people who used to say, I love you, and I just think it's the greatest service. And the other is like, how do I get the number? <laughs> so, I mean, it's obviously you've struck a chord here. Yeah. Uh, why is it so different? Why is it so, let's call disruptive. Yeah, well, right now in the U.S., most dog owners hate the idea of taking their dog to a kennel. Only 8% of dog owners take their dog to a kennel when they travel out of town. So 92% of the market is searching for solutions. It's actually the most underutilized part of the entire pet industry. So you have 90% of the population that has the problem, but doesn't like the available options until Rover came along. Okay, now, uh, I'm watching, I'm, I'm a kid in high school. I, I call a bunch of other kids, I say, look, I saw this Rover.com. I'm gonna set up <laughs> Rover.com too. I mean, what, where are the uh, barriers to entry? Um, so we only approve something like 20% of uh, sitter applicants. Um, there's a background check. Um, our technology reviews their profiles. We have humans review their profiles. References get submitted. And ultimately, we're a data business. So we're constantly looking at the data trends to see who's doing a great job. Now, uh, what's the price differential, say, in New York City, is where we are, but I'm sure cities, the, the rent's expensive, so the kennel prices have been going up, right? Yeah, in, in uh, big cities, uh, commercial real estate's really expensive. Prices of kennels get more expensive over time, which is why Rover's an even better solution in cities. Uh, you know, New York may be $45, $50 a night, but on average, U.S.-wide, it's about $30 a night. And you're, this is, you guys come under it nicely, and yet, at the same time, I know one of the problems we have with the kennels, we're, we have a good kennel, I, I don't mean to to knock them, but we don't know what dogs are there, and we don't know what's going to happen. And they've got some cameras, but this is much more on site, right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, for our overnight business, people normally take their dog to the sitter's house. They get a chance to see the sitter, their dog interact with the sitter. If the sitter has a dog, they get to see that. They get photo updates, music video updates. They see how their dog's doing their end trip. It's uh, that sense of connection even while you're away is really important. Now, we just saw this uh, huge deal for VCA, and it made me think, well, Rover's done a couple. You've gotten a financing. You just hit a completed Series E. I mean, the market wants Rover.com to come public. It likes these niche dot-coms, but you're taking your time. It's 2011, <laughs> right? You're not, you're not in a hurry. <laughs> we're, we're not in a hurry. Uh, we, we're really excited about the future opportunity. We're tapping less than 1% of the market right now, so there's a lot of growth ahead of us. That being said, we're targeting 2018 for a public offering. Okay. Now, we had a an outfit on last week that, that does uh, basically the platform for a lot of gyms and salons. You have your own proprietary platform that you use for Rover.com? Yes, uh, we're a tech business at heart. Right. Um, so one of our biggest areas of investment in addition to uh, marketing and customer acquisition is actually our tech platform. Um, so for sitters, we do everything from the photo sharing, the scheduling, the calendaring. We have 24-7 vet consultation, 24-7 support. Um, so it's a robust platform. And uh, I know you're still, you're, uh, you've got this Rover card system. I want you to tell people about that because that's what people say is, I want their card. <laughs> sure. What does it mean? How do they get it? And, what, and, and, and how do you profit? So for daytime services, which is dog walking, drop-in visits, daycare, it turns out that uh, most dog owners are really dissatisfied 
at the options because they're not sure the service is even being delivered. Because the service that's being delivered in their absence, which is the okay. opposite of a hotel or restaurant. <laughs> that's a very good right? point. Right. And so what Rover Cards is, uh, we invented them so an owner would know what's going on. So uh, when the service is delivered, they get an update. Did the dog go to the restroom? Did it drink water? How far did it walk? Which route did it take? When did the person enter and exit the home? So you actually know the service is being delivered as contracted. Well, that's exactly if you're talking about humanization of pets. That is the next level indeed. That's Aaron Easterly. He's the CEO of Rover.com. Private company. But boy, would the stock market love this one. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs. Plus, market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.